So I walk in, I look around, I say, hello. I peek into the next door and I see these two men at a table. Good morning, my friends, it's Ro, welcome back. I look crazy. I'm gonna acknowledge it right now, it's for a reason. I just woke up, I slept with my makeup on. I know it's a cardinal sin to do it, but the things YouTube makes you do, because I know I wanted to get up and make this video first thing. I know my hair looks crazy, it's air dried. I have nothing in there except for heat protectant because, oh, it's so exciting. This company sent me this flat iron to try out and just tell you guys honestly how I feel about it, what I think. So I figured we'll do that together, but I'll also tell you a story about a time that I went to visit with the most craziest, craziest, most crazy, my grammar. I swear as I get older, it gets worse. But with the craziest hair, orange, it was a mess and I had no choice. I had to leave to go to visit with this hair. So I'll tell you that whole entire story, how I got my hair like that, a background story and how I tried to fix it before visit and actually, it didn't look so bad the day I went to go see Adam. So if you're interested in all of that, plus a review of this flat iron, Duvol, Duvol I think it's called. If you're Italian, you say Duvole. That sounded French, that was awful. No, you just say nothing because you're fake and you don't know how to speak a language and you don't have a good accent. But anyway, just an honest review, but really it's just more for a story time. I'm doing the shittiest job ever of filming a video because I haven't even had caffeine. I literally just woke up. So give me a minute to turn this on. We're going to get this hot. We'll do my hair and I'm gonna change because it was cold as soon as I got out of bed, but now it's hot. Maybe I should have some caffeine too. Okay, stop, just stop talking. So give me a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, before I plug it in, let's unbox together. And if I say curling iron, you guys, it's just because I haven't had caffeine yet. It's first thing in the morning, I need food. I need my liquid energy and I'm a mess, I mean flat iron. So it comes in this really pretty box that slides right open. I needed to come in and interrupt this video because, spoiler alert, I loved the way my hair turned out with this iron so much. I went back to the rep and I got you guys a 70% discount code. So stay to the end of the video for that code. All the details will also be in the description box below, but stay to the end of the video because you really want to hear how this story turned out. Ah, love you guys, back to the video. And the only curling iron I've ever had, oh, see here I go again. The only flat iron I've ever had was a Chi and it's really old. So let's see how this one compares. My Chi only had an on off switch. What's really cool about this iron, let's see if I could show you on camera. It has this heat switch. It has the on and off right here, but then also I can toggle the temperature. So it starts at 140 and it goes to 450 and it's just this turn dial right here. And you turn it to the heat you want, which is awesome for somebody like me who has bleached hair, who has very weak, brittle, over-processed hair and it's just my natural texture texture is also bad. So this is helpful because I'm not just stuck using a flat iron that is set at a certain temperature that I don't even know because it just has an on off switch. So that's really cool. Now you guys, just to make this very clear, they just sent this to me for free if I wanted to make a video. So I like that. I don't partner with companies that, I, I don't partner with any companies really because I'm not famous. <laughs> but it's just make a video if you wanna make this, we'll send it to you for an honest review if you wanna do it. So that's what I like to do because then I can tell you honestly how I feel. If I think it doesn't work, I'm not gonna have you spend your money. Let's get to the good stuff, let's plug this in. So let's turn it on. I just switched it to on. It's already starting to get hot. It gets hot pretty quickly. I'm not gonna turn it all the way to 450 because your girl's hair is fried. I'm gonna put it on somewhere between 140 and 450, probably a little more than the middle. So I'm gonna leave this for about 10 minutes to let it get really hot. Yeah, it's getting pretty hot. So I can drink some tea. It's just a good excuse to go downstairs and get some caffeine in my body and I will be back. I was going to straighten my hair before I did this, but then I thought the best test of a flat iron on my hair is to start with really, really frizzy hair, a brush out. That just means I got lazy and I didn't wanna blow my hair out. But seriously, this is a good test. I like to section my hair when I do this. I promise there is a story time coming, so I don't know how much of this footage I'll leave in. But I used to work with this girl who was a singer. She was on American Idol and she actually made it to the final three. What I found out about American Idol through her is it's kind of a pain in the ass to place if you don't win because the more advanced you go, the longer and longer your non-compete contracts get. So she couldn't sign with anybody for three or four years because of American Idol, but she didn't win. So she didn't get anything from them. 
thought that was very interesting. Anyway, she loved to do funky hair and she would always have purple and pink in her black. She was Dominican, so she had this beautiful dark black, very curly hair and she wore it really short and she would get purple and pink dyed into it and it looked gorgeous. And so at one point I was looking to switch hairdressers and she's like, you have to check out my girl. She's so talented. She's really good with blondes and all that stuff. And at this point, that's when those ombre dipped tips were in. It just looked like you dipped your the tip of your hair into bleach or a lot of times color. That's when fun, funky colors hit the scene and you would just have the bottom of your hair blue or purple or pink or green. It was so cool. I just had blonde highlights in my hair, really bleach blonde highlights at the ends and she would give me keratin treatments. I think that's the best my hair ever looked in my whole entire life. So I loved her. Plus she had this great, the hairdresser, she had this great personality. I loved her. Ow, you might want to use a glove if you make it hot, really hot. I would always have fun going in there, but she was 45 minutes from my house and she was a little bit expensive. It was still worth it. My hair looked great. I'm going to put pictures from old YouTube videos when I was going to her in here because my hair just looked phenomenal and I don't really have the best hair texture to work with. So if you can get my hair to look that good, like Victoria's Secret runway hair, I am a fan for life. I'll drive halfway across the country for you. I got my sisters to start going to her. And over time, I've had a lot of hairdressers do this. You guys tell me if you've had the same experience. I don't know if she would get complacent or lazy or felt like she didn't need to impress you anymore, but her work started to kind of cut corners and she would just not give as much oomph to my hair. And then after a couple months from that, she would have her assistants who were just in hair school coming in to intern with her. She would have them do my hair completely. And then at the end, she would just come look at it and then be like, okay, good job, D you're done. She never touched my hair once and I was still paying prices for her. But it was still fine, my hair still looked fine. I still think it looked good. My keratin treatments were done basically by her, so that was fine. This one time I go in, probably about a year and a half after I'm seeing her, and she has her assistant do my hair. We were getting highlights that day. She checked it and she's like, okay, looks great. And then flutters off because she was one of the best hairdressers at the salon. So she was always working on five or six different clients at the same time. So I pay, I go home and I realize I have this section right here that didn't get, that didn't get bleach. It didn't take the bleach. So it, it was bleach, dark root, and then the rest of my bleach. It looks crazy. It looked like I was wearing a headband while they were doing my highlights. It was crazy. But I'm not the type that's gonna go back and complain. First of all, it's 45 minutes away, but I'm like, it's it happens, people mess up. It's not that big of a deal. I was starting to go gray at that point anyway, so I needed to go back every, I think at that point, every six weeks or eight weeks or something like that. So I just said, I'll be back soon enough. I could wear my hair wavy at that point from the keratin, so I could still hide it pretty easily, not a big deal. My sister in between had an appointment for highlights as well. Same thing happened, the assistant worked on her hair the whole time. So the hairdresser comes over and checks my sister's hair. She's like, okay, looks great, and then goes on to her other clients and sends my sister on her merry way. My sister pays a lot of money. I'm sorry that you could hear this bed squeaking in the background. That's gonna be really annoying, isn't it? We all lived together at that point, it was so long ago. And she walks in the door and we were all like, oh, her hair was orange and black. It looked like the brassiest, most unfinished highlights. It, it was just awful. They were chunky. It just didn't look good. So my sister's not like me. She's like, if my hair's messed up and I paid a few hundred dollars for highlights, you're gonna fix it. So she calls the salon and she books an appointment to get her hair fixed. She goes back, the normal hairdresser sits with her. She's like, I see what you mean. She fixes it. It looks good, she does what she has to do. She did not have an assistant touch her the whole time, she did it herself. And she was apologizing for what happened, blah, blah, blah. So the hairdresser's done. My sister's like, thank you so much, it looks so much better, I appreciate it, I'm sorry, I just, I can't go to a professional job in the city, messed up. So she was like, no problem, they say goodbye to one another, and she goes to leave. And the girls at the front desk were like, whoa, 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 whoa come back here. And so she comes back and they tried to charge her 
again the full price for what she just got done and then went back and got fixed because it was their mistake. They shouldn't have charged her anything. It was their mistake. My sister said, no, 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 no. I was here for a correction. I saw Jen. You can go ask her. They argued with her. And my sister said, can you just do me a favor and go get Jen so we could talk about this? They went to the back and then they came out and they said, Jen won't come out. You owe us $300, let's say. It was a lot of money. My sister's like, are you kidding me? They wouldn't even give her a discount. They charged her all over again for something she was at the salon for a couple days before that they messed up. So my sister has words with them. She winds up paying. She said, I will never come back here. Half my family comes here. That's what we do. One sister will come. They will fall in love with a hairdresser and then we'll bring our four other sisters and every single one of our four sisters friends will all start coming to that hairdresser. So not only did your bad business just lose me as a client, you just lost probably 10 or 15 of Jen's other clients. So why don't you let her know that? Sorry, she couldn't come out of the back. Understandable, I wasn't going back to see Jen. Bad business, don't treat my family like that. I was kind of secretly upset because I loved my hair. I was also secretly kind of relieved because that's a long way to drive every four to six weeks. Back to prison wife life. This all happened in the winter. I don't see Adam throughout the months of usually October to, it's like October, November to usually March-ish because he lives up in the mountains of Pennsylvania. They have very terrible winters. It's very unsafe to drive. It snows just about every day. So I was on winter recess when this had all happened, but that year we had a very, very mild winter. So President's Day is a long weekend, and in federal prison, at least at this facility back then, they took it away, but any holiday is a visit. So it doesn't matter what day of the week the holiday falls on, you can have visit, even though they don't have visiting hours. Where I go, visiting hours are just Saturday and Sunday. So I could go over President's Day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, but I could also go to visit on Monday because it was President's Day. And that almost always falls Valentine's Day weekend. So what I decided to do was to go visit Adam for Valentine's Day because it was a mild winter. But I also wanted to get up really early in the morning just in case I hit bad weather. So I had the most amount of daylight to travel in because you never know. I realize a few days before, oh no, I have roots. My hair looks terrible. I still had the headband and I needed it fixed, but I didn't have time to find a new hairdresser. I just didn't know what I was gonna do, but I needed my hair done. Well, my sister-in-law was in hair school at that point. So she was like, oh my God, I'm just learning balayage. That was just when the ombre trend, just the tips were going out and balayage was coming in. So she said, I could do it for you. And this way you could save money. So I was like, awesome, why not? She's in hair school, she knows what she's doing. She comes over and we probably finished at 10 o'clock at night. And I had to get up to go to visit the next morning early. I went to bed with it wet. I didn't really see the final result because it had gotten late. She needed to go home. She had little kids, my brother was staying with them. And I needed to get up early in the morning for a visit. So the next morning I get up and I blow out my hair and it looked like, looked like you had a sheet of paper and somebody tore the sheet of paper from the bottom and it had those edges, the frayed edges, and from the torn off point to the bottom was this awful burnt orange sienna weird disgusting color, worse than my sister's Tony the Tiger stripes. It was so bad and then the top was really dark. It was black and then orange ripped off looking like. I thought to myself, okay, don't cry, don't stress. You're gonna have to figure this out. Worst case scenario, I could pull my hair up into a bun for visit. I have to get on the road. So I finally make it to town. My drive was fine. Maybe there were a couple flurries along the way, but we had a really good winter. There were no problems getting there at all. So I made it to town probably about 3 p.m. I still had plenty of daylight. And I checked into the hotel and I asked at the front desk if they knew where a hair salon was. And the woman told me, yeah, it was literally walking distance from the hotel, one block over and one block up. So I checked in, I got all of my stuff out of the car into the room. And the first thing right after I got unpacked from the car was go to find this hair salon. And I walked down there and unfortunately they were closed for the day, which meant for the weekend because things in this town were so, we call them blue laws in New Jersey. I don't know if they're called that everywhere. I guess they must be. Are those federal laws? I don't know, but everything shuts down there, especially on Sundays. So I knew I was beat on that one. I take out my phone and I Google hair salons and it gives me an address, literally another block up 
and one block that way. I'm like, cool. So I walked the block up and the block over and I'm at the address of the hair salon. And it's a house, but that's not uncommon, at least where I live. Like people do have businesses out of their houses. I go up to this house slash what Google tells me is a hair salon. And I peek in and there's a screened in front porch. And I could see that after the front porch is a door that leads into this hair salon house. In the screened in porch, on the floor, looks like they're doing renovations, and on the floor is an old hairdresser sink. It looked like they were getting rid of it. So I'm figuring, okay, they're just getting rid of stuff and they're probably renovating and redoing the salon and bringing it up to date. I knock, nobody comes to the door. I see that second door that leads into the salon slash house is open. So I walk in, I look around, I say, hello. I peek into the next door and I see these two men at a table, one at one end, the other one facing him, playing cards. There are about 15 ashtrays overflowing on the table. They're both smoking cigarettes. I don't think they even noticed I was there. And I was like, <gasps> and I ran. I booked it out of the house because I was like, I'm in somebody's house. This isn't a hair salon. It probably was, and they never updated Google, but I'm in somebody's house. So I freaked. I run outside. Now I'm like four blocks from my car, so I'm starting to book it to my car. <laughs> this man passes me, and I, he was like, hello. And I was like, hi. Uh. I get back to my car. My only option to fix my hair at this point is to buy box dye. Now, I had box dyed my hair for years. I didn't really want to go back to box once I started to go to professionals because they would always, in your head, be into box dye is the worst, especially dark box dye, which by the way, I've been dyeing my hair with during quarantine because I just can't stand to see gray roots. So at that point, my only option was box dye at Walmart. So I called my friend and her sister-in-law was a hairdresser because I wasn't about to ask my sister-in-law. I didn't even want her to know that I was going to re-dye my hair because I felt bad because she had spent all these hours at my house trying to dye my hair and it just didn't take. I have very finicky hair. It's really easy to make my hair brassy. It was not her fault. She just didn't have the experience yet with hair like mine. So I'm pulling into Walmart and it's this long driveway, probably about a quarter of a mile. And the end of the shopping center is this huge Walmart. But to your right, when you make a right into the parking lot, there's a strip of stores. There was a fashion bug. There was a shoe store, kind of like a famous footwear. Then there was a game store. And then there was another store that I never noticed until this day. I look over and in big red block letters, I see hair. And I was like, hair? It could either be a salon, it could be a beauty supply store like a Sally's or something. This could save my hair's life. I pull up, I'm like, mom, let me see what it is. And it's literally a hair salon. I'm like, yes. So I walked in and it was this adorable old lady, old school hair salon. The lady at the front desk was like, can I help you? And I said, do you take walk-ins? And she said, we do, of course. And I showed her my hair, my little tear off. And I said, my sister-in-law dyed my hair last night. It came out awful. Can you fix it? And she was like, of course, of course, sit down. So they put me in a chair. I'm thinking it's an old school hair salon. I have already fucked up hair. Like I, it, this could go either really well or it could go really bad, but I'll take my chances. It's better than me left to my own devices with a box of dye from Walmart. She's like, what do you want me to do? And I said, fix it. And she's like, okay, what I could do is I'll pull the highlights up to the top. I think actually what she did was, I think we dyed it all back to a base brown color and then she put highlights on. I think that's what she did. I don't remember, but I remember I wasn't even there for very long. I have to tell you guys, I freaking loved it when she was done. I loved it so much that I told Adam, I wish I lived closer. I was like that, or I'm just going to start getting my hair done when I come to visit, which didn't happen because I found a really, really, really good hairdresser here, the one that told me that I should brush out my hair and wear it like Beyonce. And I really didn't wanna take my chances with getting appointments. I never knew what time I was gonna to get to town. I never knew even when I was gonna to go to visit. And plus, I lucked out. I got a really good hairstylist in this salon. What would have happened if I was just a walk-in every time and then I didn't get somebody good in between? But this girl saved the day. I went to visit, I loved my hair. I loved my hair for the length of the time until it grew out and I had to find somebody here in New Jersey. That was hysterical. And the whole point is we look forward to these visits like there are dates. 
and I just made that video about what it would be like if Adam was released like this and my insecurities about having sex. And God forbid it happens during quarantine and I had this crazy dream that I was gonna have roots and I was gonna have to wax and all of this stuff. I couldn't get a manicure or a pedicure and I wouldn't be at my best. I've gained a lot of weight in quarantine. I'll pop that video up there. This video is just kind of reiterating what I said there. They don't care. You're beautiful no matter what. If you have a bad hair dye experience, if you go to visit like that, you could laugh about it. I lucked out, but I'm sure if I ruined my hair with dye and I put it back in a bun, he wouldn't have even noticed. Men don't typically notice those things. So there's that story. Funny for not having food or caffeine in me. I got real long-winded on that one. Here's the finished product. And I have to say, for hair that started out air dried, frizzy, and brushed out curls. That three quarters of my straightening was done in this teeny tiny little viewfinder of camera. My hair turned out bomb. I love this. I will reach for this over my chi any day. It made my hair so flat and it feels like silk. The only thing in my hair is some heat protectant that I sprayed on two days ago when I washed it. So I am thoroughly impressed with this curling iron. I keep saying curling iron. Badass. So if you want to get one, I will put a link below. This is the brand. It gets the job done. I am so thoroughly impressed. But I'm back really quick to tell you, I spoke with a rep at the company and I got you guys a 70% off code. So with the code MYGLOW, I'll pop it in somewhere here. All capitals, my glow, all one word, 70% off on either a flat iron or if you're more a curling wand girl, they have curling wands that she also offered me two different ones, 32 millimeter or 25 millimeter with the code my glow. You'll get them for less than $30, $28.50 to be exact. That's before shipping, but they're all regularly $95. I liked it. I don't know. I'm not a saleswoman. I'm just telling you, you can get a hundred dollar curling iron for $28.50 if you want, if you like the way it turns out. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want more get ready with me or hair makeup type of videos to go along with story times because I love doing them. Let me know what you think about the hair story. Give this video a thumbs up. Me and my bomb ass straight hair already in no place to go because we're in quarantine. But that's okay. I'm going to go have a breakfast date with myself. It's still sitting downstairs on the counter and I'm starving at this point. I'm probably slap happy and that's why it took me so long to tell this story. If you guys want to see a get ready with me where I did my makeup and I talked all about the show for life and things that us as prison wives and family members go through, click the video there. And then if you're not already subscribed, please do me a favor and do it by clicking that little circle or you could always do it by clicking the red button below. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one.